Please help me welcome our guests, Tim Burton, executive producer and director, Colin Farrell, Nico Parker, Finley Hobbins, Eva Green, Danny DeVito, and Michael Keaton. No problem, guys. No pressure. Yes! Here, <laughs> he didn't fall this time. Yeah, he didn't. Okay, no. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> He's such a clown. Has anyone, has anyone noticed how much Mabel O'Rourke loves having a hand mic? He just loves having a hand mic. Is he, is he in the mood? Who, who's that? There you go. You know, yeah. You know, you mean that guy? <laughs> yeah, the politician? It's going well so far, isn't it? <laughs> oh my, sorry, I saw a hand mic and it just reminded me. Welcome to the DeVito and Keaton show where calls are a thing. I'll tell you another thing that I know. <laughs> You guys, speaking of performance, there's something that this movie really illuminated for me, which is watching performers is magic. Can we just go down the line, starting with you, Tim? Yeah, I'm looking at you. Just which performer in a circus do you love the most? Which of you identified with the most, if there is one? Yeah. Um, not, none of it. I mean, it's funny, I made like circus movies, but I never liked the circus. But, but I like the idea of it. I, I, I like the idea that, that sort of concept when you're a child of running away to the circus. It was sort of a, a, just a phrase that sort of stuck with a lot of people. And I think that's the idea of, not the circus per se, but the idea of being with a bunch of other weird people from around the world that can't get regular jobs. Kind of <laughs> Colin, was there a performer that you always loved more than the others? No, I've never seen the circus. I've never. Never? Never. Except in the world of Tim Burton? Except in the world of Tim Burton's imagination coming to a cinema near you. <laughs> Maybe a uh, seal. Fair enough. <laughs> because I used to play football. Nico, what about you? I think probably uh, the contortionists. Like, what, like when they like climb on top of each other, it was like, it just, because I could never do any of that, I just thought all of it was like, Incredible. And then the cake top dancers as well. Because uh, I, I got to watch that really recently. That was cool. Awesome. Finley? Um, probably the jugglers because uh, you have an excuse if you like go wrong, you can throw stuff at people's faces. <laughs> Finley. That's the best reason that I've ever heard. <laughs> Eva, what about you? I mean, Mia would have to say trapeze people, aerialist. Uh, I was, I've always been petrified of heights, like a real phobia, and thanks to Mr. Tim Burton, uh, I've overcome my fear. I've, um, I've yeah, I, I trained. Anybody needs any help with any problems? <laughs> <laughs> you don't like clowns, heights, anything? I'm in the lobby after this. Danny, how about you? I, I, I really love the aerialist, the high wire, well, type of walkers. But it didn't really astound me. So I, I, it's balance and grace and daring and all the things that I lack. Okay. All the things that you're known for, Dan. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, you've seen the film. They have not. They have. Oh, I, me? The snake. I, no, actually, I could be the snake. Not the snake handler, the snake. Um, I'm with him, the aerialist and, and Eva. Um, for, first of all, the most, more than anything is what I want to do is fly. I, that would be it for me. I have those flying dreams. Uh, and I say that like I think everybody has a flying dream. Um, but, um, that's, I think that's, that's a common accurate. dream. Yes, but the aerialists do knock me out. Um, and all that stuff and the trapeze artist, yeah. You end up flying in movies, actually, more than most performers do. Name one. Name one. <laughs> Self-promotion. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Miss, Mr. Mom is one of the <laughs> Well, besides, all right, besides that one. No, no name one, because I know where you're going, and Tim and I are ready for this. Go ahead. 
Can you talk about what it's like to work with Tim Burton? I can't, but here's the deal. I'm gonna say Batman. It's like Batman. my own funeral. Let me leave the room. <laughs> I know you hate this Man, part. Sorry. I'm all the way back to you now. Everybody yeah, let's take it back to say something. I think he's brilliant. I think he's just a genius. And, like his, his artistry is just astounding. You give a, a talented person like Tim a subject like Dumbo with all the great meaning and messages and metaphors and what is he doing sends it off into the stratosphere and he's just he's one of a kind and he's just amazing and we love him so much and we like to see him squirm <laughs> come on i gotta be buried in like five minutes <laughs> wrap it up <laughs> it's true i'm sorry you're ready to get sick of this it's a rare thing to work with an original uh, and and to be in the thick of it you know to be right in the middle of Piece art. Really, we do have to stop this now because he is getting sick of this. But it's true. It's absolutely true. Well, there's only four or five more people left. Okay, so go ahead. Yeah, now you go really fast. It's, this is no problem. Let's talk about actually you two being the newbies. Can you? This is. These are. Base, this is basically your first films, right, you guys? Yeah. Yeah. So you kind of had Colin Farrell there to shepherd you, which seems really fortunate. No shepherding needed. Trust me. Uh, he was, Nico would be like, Colin, you're two feet off your mark. I, I did that, yeah. <laughs> and so what, what was your first day on set like? Finley, what, what, take us back to that. Um, well, I can't really remember much from the first day, but um, with Nico, I remember one of the first days of filming. Uh, we were, it was like we were in our costumes and we were just going in for like a costume check. Um, and then we would have done, I think, one of the first scenes. Um, and then um, Danny walked past and we just, and then we just did that and it was five seconds and each second felt literally like an eternity of just going, hi, how are you, hi, how are you? And then, um, and then we met Colin and then Ava and then Michael and then Tim and it was just terrifying each time the first time. <laughs> uh, but then we, then we, we. <laughs> So, so seeing you're spending time with Danny DeVito is like an eternity. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Tim, let's talk about why Dumbo. What do you love about Dumbo? I mean, I just liked the, um, it was a, just the idea of it, the, the idea of a flying elephant, a character that doesn't quite fit into the world and how, you know, somebody with a disadvantage makes it an advantage. So it just felt very close to the way I felt about things and it was just a very pure, simple image that, uh, you know, like all the great old Disney fables had that kind of simple symbolism for, for you know, real um, emotions. There are so many things that this story expands on because the original, we were talking earlier, is only 60 minutes long. So what were some of your ideas as to, you know, working with Aaron Kruger on how to kind of... Well, I just like the fact that it's obviously a very simple fable, very simple story at its heart about family and, and you know, and what I liked about it was the human parallel story. You know, this, this character Holtz who comes back from a war, doesn't have an arm, doesn't have a wife, doesn't have a job, doesn't have a, uh, you know, is trying to find his place in the world. And, and all the characters actually are in that way. You know, Nico's character, you know, she, they want to be something, she wants to be something else. Every, every character in it, every, it's not, you know, everybody is trying to find their place in the world, like Dumbo in, in using disadvantage to advantage. So lots of, nice themes but you know in a very simple framework colin you've already said that there was no shepherding necessary for your movie kids what were you doing on this film <laughs> as little as possible <laughs> knowing that much of the work was done for me and around me he was lassoing dogs on this awesome <laughs> lassoing pink poodles you're safe don't worry about it <laughs> I said, poodles, not humans. Yes, indeed. And I left the rope at home. Moving on swiftly. I mean, you know, I was playing, as Tim was saying, I think everyone in the character is at odds with either their past or what's going on in the present or both. And so I was playing a father who was disenfranchised from his kids, disenfranchised from a life that he left behind that's completely different by the time he comes back from fighting in the first war. He's physically a different man, he's lost his left arm, he's seen a lot of brutality. I mean, we don't get into all that psychological stuff so heavy because we want the film to be able to be received with the importance of the messages that are in it rather than hitting them all over the head. But uh, my character's journey was one in, in just accepting his position as, as father and how 
that meant that all he had to do really was get out of his children's way and let them be who they are. Tim, you mentioned briefly that this is, the, the Dumbo is about kind of leaving behind things that other people might perceive as a weakness and turning it into a strength. So I was thinking about a journey as an artist seems like it could be something similar. Eva, do you think that that applies to your work at all? Do you identify with that theme? Feeling like an outsider? <laughs> right now, I do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, I think uh, you don't have to be an artist to feel like an outsider. I think everybody has felt at some point kind of a bit strange or different. And yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big thing. It's just, it's such a wonderful movie because it has that message of like, you know, it's okay to be, you know, strange or, or different. It's actually great. It makes you special and we just have to embrace our uniqueness. Can you expand on the training that you did in order to conquer, first of all, conquer your fear of heights, but also to be this performer in the circus so elegantly? Yeah, I mean, I had uh, the most amazing um, circus people who were very patient, very kind with me, uh, because I was absolutely petrified. I thought I would never be able to do that. Uh, and so, yeah, for like two months every day, I trained, uh, you know, and you need like a very strong core as well. They very, very, have very strong abs, very strong arms. And then little by little, I went higher and higher and higher. And that was amazing. I, I, I you know, I, I found a trick, it was to sing as well, to really, in French, like, whoa, you know, off you go, and you swear and you sing. And, uh, <laughs> and I, I, I surprised myself. Uh, it, was, it was a miracle. Yeah. Well, you absolutely looked like you were born to be on a trapeze. I mean, it was just amazing. In fact, we have one set up here now. <laughs> okay, let's hoist her up. We spent a long time doing this. So I don't want to make sure we leave plenty of time for questions, so let's get these mics circulating. Uh, right there, Miss? The mic's coming right to you. Hi, this is such a beautiful film. I'd like to know, what do you hope for the whole panel kids will take away from seeing this movie? <clears throat> Uh, the same thing, adults take away for it, the importance of, you know, not just accepting the um, inherent difference that people have from each other in relation to each other, but celebrating it, you know. I just think there, as Tim was saying, there are simple messages that are very complex, it seems, to live in as we go on through our lives, and those messages are messages of kindness and inclusion and, and all those kind of things, so that'd be cool. Or else, if they're just entertained for a couple of hours, I'll take that as well. <laughs> But also just with like the Disney movies, the, for me the reason I wanted to do it was like the old Disney movies had all these elements, you know, they had joy, they had humor, they had... Let's uh, <laughs> <laughs> go nine rounds. <laughs> um, so, uh, what was I talking about? Joy. <laughs> joy. <laughs> they had, you know, everything, you know, something on top of your subjects. But, you skip so deftly from joy and humor to death. <laughs> <laughs> Two sides of the same coin. The mixture of those things, and so, like I was just saying, we tried to show these, present these things without overdoing it in, in a fable-like way, and and but 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 then let it present itself and not just sort of dictate it, and, and just show these people for what they're going through. And, Mr. Burton, I'm a huge fan of your work. I, I love it's a dream to speak to you, but um, I was wondering what draws you to a performer or an artist? What qualities do you look for? Because you often work with the all. same actors. I know, yeah. these, especially these three <laughs> beauties on the end. <laughs> what draws you to a performer or artist? Well, it's very simple. And in this particular case, it's a few things. It's not a Oh yeah, they gotta hear you say they all look weird. No, they, yeah. no, but, no, but, well, there's a point because Dumbo, you know, it's a, it's a heightened reality. So for me, there's two different things. There was one because it's a weird story about weird family. 
it was very special to me to work with you know people like that I've worked with Michael, Evan, Danny, and and Colin. I I feel like I've worked with him for many years because he's got the same kind of spirit. And meeting Nico and feeling everybody and Alan Arkin having like a family, a weird dysfunctional family, like a film <laughs> is and like the movie Circus is, was just very beautiful and important. And the, and the, the spirit of all of them really meant the world to me in terms of what the movie is and the spirit that they all put into it. And because it's like a weird elephant, I had one thing in the back of my mind, you know, all the people had to look kind of weird. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> in a good way. And coming from an actual dysfunctional yeah, family, I felt like I feel like It was like Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> Huge fan, love this film. Have to ask Michael and Danny, so good to see you guys back on screen together. What was it like coming back together to perform, but in kind of an opposite role? Yeah, it was great, that was really terrific. Uh, when Tim called uh, uh, a year ago, or whatever it was, uh, and uh, said he was making the movie, I was really thrilled to uh, be able to be part of it. And then, uh, you know, the joy factor went up uh, through the roof when I heard that Michael was in it with me. And because uh, we're part of the joy players. factor was the, the first thing he reminded me was <laughs> he got to be the hero and I got to be the bad guy. He was just, <laughs> he just thrilled with that. Well, you know, it's once in a while, how does it feel to be the bad guy? You know, him in the mask and the whole Batman thing, I mean, it's just you know, too much for me. And, you know, and me always being the, you know, gross penguin, you know, <laughs> grunting and groaning and stuff. I was really uh, so nice to, to be with him in the movie. And everybody who's in the movie with us all together, like Tim says, this great family that he creates. And he is the, uh, you know, we're all the weirdos, you know, but there is one really weird daddy. <laughs> on the end, it's like <laughs> pulling all the strings. Uh, and uh, so we were really we're thrilled to be together. Welcome to the island of misfit toys. <laughs> I know that you just spoke about training. Uh, I want to know exactly, well maybe it's actually for both Tim and Eva. How much of that, of your performance, was actual, you actually doing the stunt in comparison to what was maybe either CGI'd or maybe a stunt double? How much of that was actually Eva? Well, she did mostly everything. I mean, there was a couple of times when her, the person that she worked with did things, but no. Oh, I wasn't saying anything interesting. <laughs> um, no, no, Evan did, Evan, she worked, I mean, nobody really knows this, and people working on the movie, how hard she worked at it, and she could do everything. I mean, there were certain cases where a person did it for her, but, you know, that's the amazing thing about her, you know, she did, she, she was doing it, you know? There was a couple of times that she couldn't do it for... Yes, for we had um, my, my stunt double, uh, was uh, Catherine Arnold. She's just the, the most amazing aerialist. She was my teacher as well, and she, uh, she was very patient. And, um, and I'm, I'm just in awe of the, the circus people because they work so hard. They're so dedicated and they train and train. You know, it's, they, they're ready to sacrifice themselves almost. They kind of, you know, because they constantly have to overcome their fear as they put themselves in mortal danger and I'm I mean you know actors were nothing compared to those kind of superheroes while we're talking about CG can we talk about what Dumbo was actually represented by on set because it I mean I'm having trouble believing that real <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah yeah Ed was like a weird insect but he, you know he had this green suit on and Ended like, but Ed was amazing because he actually studied elephants and movements. So, you know, you guys, you, you remember Ed, don't you? Yeah, yeah we really did. Ed. He was great, but he really got into like the feel and movements of elephants. Uh, you know, he looked like a weird insect. <laughs> so we had help. It, it, well, he, was, you know, he did give him an awful hard time because it was unavoidable. He was dressed in a green spandex suit for the guts of five months. <laughs> You guys, you guys got really close with that, right? 
Yeah, because we were with him like the whole time. And then like, I think midway through, we found out that he was in Tarzan and could do like the ape walk. Oh my, we, like, oh, we, we took such it advantage so of that. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when we first found out, we were like, oh yeah, it's cool. And then uh, we were like, okay, do it. And then we were like, do it again, do it again, do it, do it again. And then we were like, teach us how to do it, teach us how to do it. Um, and that went on for about a couple weeks, maybe. <laughs> um, no, we were like quite harsh on us, yeah. I uh, used Daniel Day Lewis for the scenes for me. You're going to see that in the papers, and it's going to be your fault. No, he's a friend. I asked if he'd come in and. I mean, we all know about his acting process, too, so I'm That's sure that was point. something to really behold. That's my point. I don't, uh, not necessarily, except the fact is that team comes up because I can't help it, you know what I mean? It's like part of your DNA, so. It, it's not that I consciously think about that, but you know, it's just, you know, once you're branded that way, no matter how you feel, that's what, you know, that's the themes that keep reoccurring to you. That's, it was Michael Keaton's wig in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I was eating a Kentucky Fried Chicken one day. <laughs> <laughs> After the Batman thing, right? Michael, that's why I didn't talk for 20 years. You know, I'll put that damn suit back on, you know, like. So, for the character of this one, it was like massive. I'm like, well, my character, because he didn't like ties, so his character wouldn't wear a tie, right? Yeah. <laughs> it breaks the ball for the character, and um, it was, just, it was, he was great, you know? That was, we did that on Beetlejuice, like, you try things on and then you become, like, yeah. a character. Yeah, um, I regret the wig in a lot of ways because it's, but it's so great and weird and odd and kind of off-putting, but kind of, and so well done. So what happened was, I thought about it and I thought, man, I really don't like sitting in the makeup chair for very long or the hair and makeup, I just don't like to be there. So I thought, I'm not gonna say anything, I'm not gonna say anything, and he didn't say anything, but you know, once I showed up and we were, I mean, uh, calling out what is an unbelievable genius, <laughs> as is truly Daniel Day, who's... <laughs> no, 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 I mean, no, no, I mean that, I mean that, he's, that, that that's, that's a good supreme compliment, this guy, this guy probably, if I called him, he'd probably go, yeah, I'm in, I'd probably do that. Um, he, she's so unbelievable, so when I showed up and Tim was there, and, and he, and I and Colleen were sort of, that's where you really start, and I'll bet Danny and Colin and everyone here will, will bear me out. That's where you really go from here to here with your character a lot of times. Once you feel the clothes, you start walking around it. I remember in Johnny Dangerously, I immediately knew where to go when I started getting them. So when I was there and I had in the back of my head, I thought, oh man. I'm not gonna mention the wig, don't mention the wig, don't say anything about a wig. And as soon as I said, I said, hey, this is probably a dumb idea, what do you think about a wig? And his eyes lit up, I thought, shh. Oh, I gotta wear this stupid wig. But I, I dug the wig, and, and the wig was like, now has its own agent, by the way. <laughs> Microphone is coming down towards you. Everybody just really pondered that wig. Yeah. Why don't you go and, ahead first? And I, and I call it from Hollywood. For them, what was the biggest challenge as director and producer in working with on the movie? Well, I think the, the weirdest thing on this movie was we have all these great oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you have all these great actors. The biggest challenge, I guess, was you have all these people. You have amazing sets. Colleen, Rick, the art director, amazing. The only thing that's missing is the main character. You know, that's a very, very unnerving thing to kind of be going into something and you know what you want, you know what you're trying to go for. You can even see rough animation, but until it materializes, it's scary. You know, you just don't know. And so all these people are 
suspending disbelief for everything to, to, to make the main character there and believable. So I think that was the biggest challenge. And, it's, and like I said, Dumbo just arrived about a week ago, you know, full finder. Wow. Okay, go ahead and pass that mic right over there. Thank you. Uh, oh, yeah. Big fan, Michael. Um, my question is, he brought it up a little bit uh, about Beetlejuice. Your character, for some reason, very much reminds me of Beetlejuice. Did the character you, in this movie? Yeah. Um, did you, by chance, go back and were inspired by Beetlejuice for this character? No, that's a that's a uh, lightning in a bottle kind of thing. I think deal that movie that it's, uh, unique. No, not really. Um, there there are probably certain things. I guess Danny would probably feel the same way since we've worked with Tim before. There are probably certain things that you kind of just click into immediately right away, just in terms of sensibilities. But no, not really. Um, I, I do like you know. Uh, going to extremes and uh, uh, so so anytime you're with Tim there's always that likelihood that you're gonna you're gonna go to some kind of extreme uh, you know in a look or something like that did Daniel day Lewis advise you to go extreme also <laughs> <laughs> right back there right next to you actually yeah thanks great um, question for you Tim a technical question. In developing the sound that Dumbo makes, that squeak and that cadence and pattern, and also working with Ben Davis, your cinematographer, in creating the reflective look that we have with what Dumbo sees in the reflection, and then reversing that with the fish eye to give us the vertigo and Dumbo's perspective. So I'm curious how you develop those. Well, okay, what was the first part again? Sorry. First was about the sound that yeah, Dumbo makes, yeah, developing that. Obviously, what we did like, Sound, right. Which? Good, good, good action. Um, well, we... Can I have a tin can with some strength? Uh, you know, we just... In fact, that just kept developing. We had a whole array of sounds, you know what I mean? And, and, and just varying, you know, bass, upper, lower, all that sort of stuff. And we just tried to, you know, give him a voice without him speaking, you know? And, like you, know, you see with animals and things where you know there's a connection it's not the exact human human connection but that kind of thing so you know that's just part of his character and was de just developing up to even a few weeks ago so you know we've been playing with that for a long period of time and then uh, you know just the Dumbo and, you know because it's his movie his character you know we tried to give it so you felt like you're with him and you're in his point of view and you're with him and being in the experience with him and the sort of Dumbo fish is probably based on the fact of seeing too many science fiction movies with alien vision. You know? It came from outer space. Can you pass that mic just behind you? Hi, this is for Tim. Um, the separation between uh, Dumbo and his mother remind me of the separation of the border from children and parents. It was something that came on your mind when you created that scene? Well, I think any family situation, you know, I mean, but every family is different. Like, you know, I'm different for me. I wish I'd been separated from my parents, but that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, most people would go, yeah, you want to separate your parents. Except me. That's fine. So, I, think, I don't think about, I think about things just more in a spiritual, simple way, you know? I, you know, there's news and I listen to the news and everything, but I always take things from a more, like, I try to anyway, a human point of view that, that way, and, and, you know, because it's like a fable, and all great fables tap into things that are true about today and human nature and, and, and all things, but it's not literal. You know, and that's, uh, all these people, it's a period movie, it's a fable, and it touches on all these things, but we try not to make it like ripped from today's headlines, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, the movie was made in 1941, yeah. and in 1941, if you remember the movie, the 63 minute Disney movie masterpiece from that era, the baby was separated from his mom. So I don't think it has anything to do with it this unfortunate, horrifying thing that's going on in our current news. 
two separate things, but I'm just going to say this. Thanks for bringing it up. Keep it in the consciousness because it's criminal, it's cruel, and I don't think it borders on child abuse. I think it does. Hey, hey there. Rich Pulaski, Skywalking Through Neverland. I had a question for Mr. Burton. First of all, huge fan of your work. Now, is it me, or did I see Dumbo cast a back signal shadow on their circus tent? I think that might be you. <laughs> There's a doctor at the back of the room. A for effort, though. Uh, I mean, but you'd be surprised, but also you'd be surprised how some, some subliminal things come into all sorts of things. Maybe with the team you heard in shadow. Right in the back there? It's all about the mic today, you guys. It's all about that mic. Thank you. It's a great film. I really enjoyed it. But I have to ask this. When I look at the poster in back of you, it's bold, bright pictures, but the palette of the film is very dark. Can you address that? Here we go well, again. You saw a, a, a bad print of the film because a dark print. No, well, I mean, I, it's, I, I can't hear or see, but to just, I mean, to me, this has a... <laughs> Me. Yeah, me too. I know. What about you guys? Yeah, no, I actually... Mad splashes of color. See, I, I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about, because I've been, like, things that's light, it's too light, it's too dark. No, I, I, light I, I, and too dark. I think there's a tonal shift throughout the film. I think the first half of it is, is more in keeping with this, and then it gets a bit darker with the, the introduction it's like of, weird of my color character. You know, the color palette changes in Dreamland. It becomes a bit more oppressive, a bit more dark, a little bit more sincere, even though it's beautiful and yeah. even more elaborate than what we came from. There's a weight to it. And then at the end, it ends up, you know, where it ends up. Um, but I don't think that's... And then, you know, at the end... Well, film is uh, 24 frames a second. And uh, I feel we should get onto the marketing department. I understand that uh, the, way, the way film works, uh, half of the time you're in the dark. Marketing. That's right. That's right. That's exactly it. 24 frames a second, that shutter opens and closes. So half of the time you're in that theater, you're in the dark. Right. <laughs> Looking out at this bunch, I think you belong there. <laughs> It's physically the most beautiful movie I've ever been in. I'm just gonna say that. It's unbelievably gorgeous. It's me. Back in the corner there? Oh, my question is for Mr. DeVito. Um, Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> there's been a lot of discussion um, about how there's a sort of eccentric troop in the, the narrative of the film and on stage right now. Very eccentric. I'm curious, as the ringleader, uh, was any of your performance based on uh, Mr. Burton? Oh. Well, everything I do in the movie is base, basically fed to me through the insane mind of Mr. Burton. I, I mean, I feel like, uh, you know, uh, I felt really great to be Max Medici and uh, be part of this insane family. The great thing is that it is a family and it is, um, uh, you know, Max trying to keep everything together and keep all, all, all the elements up in the air. Tim just works. 24-7 when he's making a movie, keeping everything going, keeping the plates spinning, keeping all the balls in the air, keeping everything uh, moving, all the moving parts congealing, you know, everything going together. So I feel like he's an inspiration when we're on the set and uh, pushes you to new heights. And making Tim Burton uncomfortable is how we're going to end this today. <laughs> thank you so much. Please thanks, help me thank Tim Burton, Colin Farrell, Newt Parker, Finley Hobbins, Evergreen, Danny DeVito, and Michael Keaton.